wrap up our series today called The Voice. Anybody been enjoying the series so far? Come on. It's been actually one of my favorites talking about tuning in. You see behind me, it is a radio tube and how we need to tune in to hear the voice of God. And we talked about, and I encourage you today, I'm going to be talking about a subject that is hit a whole lot with religion, that is hit a whole lot with denomination, that can be kind of sensitive, but can you just kind of be willing to expose your heart today and hear me from beginning to end? Come on, can can y'all do that for me today? And here's what I want you to do. If you're just walking into this series today, I encourage you to go back and listen to the podcast because we've walked through a journey together on how to understand who the Holy Spirit is, how to tune into his voice, and then we're going to wrap it up talking about the language in which he speaks in. Come on, are y'all with me in the house? And so go back, and so just a quick recap. Remember, we talked about the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit is a person. He's not a spirit thing going, whoo, you know, he is a person. And you have to have a relationship with the person in order to know somebody. Am I right? You can't have a relationship with this podium. You can try, but it ain't going to work. But you can have a relationship with the person. When you see the Holy Spirit as a person, as a him, you can start to build a relationship. Then we talked about how to value his voice. If you value something, you put time to it. You make time for it, right? If you really want to hear the voice of God in your life, then you're going to set an appointment. We talked about that in week two of the voice. It's probably the best subject of this whole series. Set an appointment, hear from God, and he will speak. And then we talked last week about stewarding his voice. Anybody enjoy that? In other words, when God speaks, what you going to do with it? (laughs) We all want him to speak, but now how are you going to handle it? How are you going to steward his voice correctly? And then today, if you're taking notes, here's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about God's language. I want to answer this question. Does he speak in tongues? Does he have a heavenly language for you and for me? It says, it says in the word we're going to pray, but have you ever heard this expression, this phrase, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, or the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Anybody heard that? Come on, show of hands. Come on, you with me, right? We've all heard this phrase, right? Can I tell you, though, my story is I'm not coming from the approach of I just learned about this last week, but I was honored at the age of seven where I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I've been walking this out my entire life. So I want you to know this isn't something that I just quickly learned throughout some notes and Google search, but this is something I've been walking with my entire life. Come on, y'all with me in the house? Uh, I'm going to preach to you something that I'm living and breathing myself. And we as a church, we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we believe that the power of the Holy Spirit can be inside of you. Amen. There is baptism in the Holy Spirit. We also believe that you can receive the Holy Spirit and then not be weird or goofy. Come on, somebody. Where you at? How many have been in a weird and goofy setting with the Holy Spirit? It's okay. Open. It's okay to raise your hand in church. You know that, right? You can be honest. It's weird. We, we don't believe it can be weird and goofy. We're talking about when the Holy Spirit today, we're talking about his power. We're talking about his love. We're talking about his fruit. And we're talking about his gift for you. Can I tell you, every gift is a good gift from God. Don't be afraid to receive any gift from God. Come on, are you with me in the house? Amen. We're going to talk about that. And you got to help a brother preach today. Come on, y'all ready to help me preach a little bit? Come on, we're not the church of the chosen and the frozen, but we serve a God who's alive, so we act alive. Come on, can I get an amen? Can I get a hey? Can I get a well? Let me get a woo. Okay, all right. Come on, y'all ready today? Come on, who's excited about the word of God today? Yeah, come on, let me hear you. It's going to be fun. Let's pray. Jesus. Man, do your thing today. Holy Spirit, take over. This is your service. This is your will. Let it, let it be done. Father, expose our hearts today to the truth of your gospel, God. I'm just simply just reading your word, Father. Let it speak into our spirit. Let it speak into our heart. And let it change us forever. Let us receive this gift from you today and leave better than we came. And, Father, we give it to you, God, and we give you all the glory, and we shout in advance that it is August, and it is almost football season, and for that, we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Come on, who's excited about football season in the house? Hey, yeah, man, come on, like 20% of people. I know where my altar call is going at the end. Okay, so how many understand that God has a language, and he can give you a language to be tuned in to his voice, to speak directly? How many, if I were to tell you that God wants to give you a language, to where it's a red phone to you and him and nobody else understands it, not even the devil himself. How many of you say, I want to know what that is? 
Glow. We're going to talk about it here today, about God's language. But the first thing you must understand, the Bible breaks down. I encourage you to take notes today. Every single one of you got service guides right there in your hands. You can take notes on the very back of that where the connect card is as well. But here, real quick, real quick, three things. The Bible talks about three baptisms. Three baptisms. Number one, it's the baptism in the body of Christ, which is also known as salvation. Somebody shout salvation. First Corinthians 12, 13. I'm going to kind of run through this. You can write it down if you'd like. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, For by one spirit, by spirit, we are all baptized into one body. We are baptized into the body of Jesus Christ. Are, are y'all with me in the house? So it says that the first baptism is when you finally say yes to Jesus. Jesus didn't die, you've heard me say, he didn't die to be a part of your top three. He died to be number one in your life. And when you finally say, Jesus, I'm ready for you to be number one in my life, the Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of Jesus Christ called salvation. Come on, are you with me? The Holy Spirit's number one first purpose is to introduce people to the gospel and get them into heaven. Come on, somebody. How many of you know that's good news right there? The purpose of being spirit-filled is to introduce people to Jesus. And can I tell you right now, we're going to talk about other baptisms, but let me tell you, there's one baptism that's going to get you to heaven, and that's called salvation. Come on, are you with me? Salvation is the only key that is going to get you to heaven. Number two is this. Number two is the Bible talks about the second baptism is water baptism. We all know about this. Matthew 28, 19 says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. Notice the word and, right, which means three things. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son, and the what? Holy Spirit. So in other words, there must be three baptisms. Come on, are y'all seeing this? Come on, let me know. You, you with me? I'm really breaking this down practically today. So ask yourself the question, you've heard of salvation, you've heard of water baptism, is there another baptism? Here, many people are walking around with just two baptisms, but yet God offers a free gift of a third baptism. How many want the fullness thereof of God? Come on, anybody in the house? Who, if God offers it, who wants it? Come on, yeah. I'm way better with them than without them. Come on, am I right? Okay. And so if it is a gift, no gift is a bad gift from God. Amen? And so this third baptism is number three here, and then we're going to break it all down scripturally. Number three is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The baptism in the body of Christ, if you've heard this, it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The third baptism is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. This is where Jesus baptizes us into the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? It says in, uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, this is written by John the Baptist, who, which, by the way, it's a Baptist who believes in the Holy Spirit. Just saying. Okay, so some of y'all catch that later. Matthew 3, verse 11 says this. I baptize with water. We just talked about that, right? For those who repent of their sins and turn to God, but someone is coming soon who is greater than I am and so much greater. Who are they talking about? Jesus, right? That I'm not even worthy to be his slave and carry his sandals. He will. He, who is he? Jesus. Come on, shout it out with me. Jesus. He, Jesus, will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Come on, are y'all catching this with me today? You, Holy Spirit baptizes you in the, in the body of Christ, in Jesus. Water baptism, and then now there is a third baptism where Jesus is ready today to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Come on, come on, are you with me today? So if you got two, we can finish the day to where you have all three. It goes on to say in 1 Corinthians 14, which we'll get there in a second, but 1 Corinthians 14 is probably one of the most talked about and debated scriptures when it comes to the Holy Spirit in the Bible. It's based off religion, denomination, or just beliefs. It really doesn't, it doesn't matter. People have different opinions and they have different thoughts. This is just where I believe is what Paul is trying to say in 1 Corinthians 14 is that he's trying to explain to us that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit there is a difference. Are y'all with me? between the public use and the private gift. Come on, are you with me? There, there, is a diff, there, is, there is both. Somebody say both. It's not one or the other. It is the difference between the public use and the private gift. 
He's saying that there is a difference between speaking in tongues or speaking in a prayer language uh, in public that needs to be interpreted. But then there is also a prayer language that God wants to give your private life that is for you and God and you need it the most. Come on, are you with me in the house? It's both. Somebody shout both. In other words, I want you to know that my heart is not coming from a place of, of pressure. I'm not saying you better get this today. You ain't going to heaven, bro. I'm not saying you better get this today. You ain't going to be a strong Christian. Can, I, can, can y'all hear my heart today? I'm simply introducing to you, and at the end, you have the opportunity to receive or not. If you don't, you might not be ready. And you know what? That's all right. I'm not coming from the approach of to pressure you in this. I have been in, I've been in church settings. Anybody been in church settings where it's been pushed and pressured on you? Come on. Has anybody ever had that? Nobody? Okay. Or somebody maybe don't want to admit it. All right. So, but the deal, I've been in that before, and I'll never forget being at one of these, uh, one of the, a church service, and all of a sudden, it wasn't me, but it was one of my friends, and he was telling me this story, and he, it was one of those services where everybody hit the altar call, and you were like the only one that wasn't ready. Anybody know, you know what I'm talking about? And so another, it's like, a, like you can't be the only one. So it's like a courtesy salvation, and everybody's walking down. I don't want to be there. And be like, oh, my God, he didn't go down. You know, are y'all with me? That's what I'm saying. It's like there's some that came down for Jesus and some that it was a courtesy salvation, right? They just walked down because they didn't want to be left alone in the stands and be like, ah, pointing them out. So he's always down there. He's not ready. And how many know it's okay, right? That's why Jesus stacks up on grace, amen? You come as you are when you're ready, but quicker than later. Come on, am I right? Okay, so, but he's saying, he's saying, so he's down there and he's not really ready to, Give us, he loves Jesus, not ready to fully dive into the Holy Spirit. And he's sitting there, and the pastor is just, I've seen this before too. I mean, it's just hand, like zones in on him because he's not lifting his hands. He's got his hands in his pocket, and he's checked out. And the pastor says, you getting the Holy Spirit today, boy. He said, we're going to pray till you get it. Ha! Come on, say it. Speak, speak. Ha! Come on, speak it out. Pray. Ja! Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about? Come on, man. I think I'm preaching way better than you want to admit. All right, so... And it's like, ah, and then my friend, he's freaking out. It's like you get in those moments, you're like, man, I got to do something to get out. Like I got to fake it or something, right? And so he works at a car dealership, and so he's just sitting there like, man, I got to get out of here. I got to get out. And then it hits him. Should have bought a Honda, but I bought a Kia. Should have bought a Honda, but I bought a He's like, he's got it. He's got it. Woo! Pastor's like, he's got it. Somebody shout, he's got it. He's got it. He got out of that altar call real quick. Should have bought a Honda. But about a Kia, you know what I'm saying? So, you just got to, here, here, here's my point of why I bring that up. It's because I want you to know that I'm not here to pressure you, but I will never introduce a gift from God to you that you don't need. Come on, somebody. You need this gift that I'm talking about. And now what I want to do is I want to practically break this down in the word of God. And hopefully today your heart will be stirred. This is kind of my foundation. I just painted, I just created the framework. Now we're about to paint it in about why I think you need the Holy Spirit. Come on, are y'all with me? It's, this is not forceful, but expose your heart for God to speak. Amen? Come on, are y'all with me? Number one, if you want to write notes, if you want to, does he speak in tongues? Number one, you got to understand it's scriptural. I'm just reading the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's. Nobody wants to sing with me. Okay, cool. I'll stop right there. It's scriptural. How many believe in the word of God? Come on, how many believe the scripture when it says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Come on, if you believe the word, you can't believe in Genesis and not in Revelation. You know what I'm saying? You believe in all of it or none of it. Come on, are you, are you with me? It's the fullness of the word of God. you got to understand that this topic we're talking about, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, it is scriptural. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2 says this, For he who speaks in a tongue, talking about praying in tongues, right, a heavenly language, does not speak to men but to, what does it say? God, this language is not talking to you. This language is a language that God gives you to talk to him directly. For if you do speak in tongues, it says, what does it say? For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. So when it says, when we're talking about speaking in tongues, if you've heard that phrase, in the scripture, when it says speaking or praying in the spirit, it is talking about praying in tongues. Are you with me? It's speaking about this is a language that God gives you that when you need it the most, it is your language and a communication between you and God. But then I noticed something that was pretty powerful. It says that in the spirit, 
he speaks mysteries. Do I ever remember reading in the scripture, for example, Ephesians 5 gives us the perfect game plan in the playbook for a great marriage? But he says, this is going to be your great marriage, but right at the end, don't you love the humor of God? He says, by the way, marriage is a great mystery. Come on, anybody agree that it is a mystery? Come on, where's my, where's my, it's okay to raise your hand. Men don't, ladies, yeah. Okay, okay, so, are, are y'all, y'all remember that? Marriage is a mystery. All of a sudden, it's like a new couple's like, oh, we just love each other. We finish each other's sentences. You know, it's like, you're all, oh, boom. Then you get married. It's like, holy man, this is a mystery, bro. Come on, are y'all with me in the house? It's a myth. And also in Ephesians 1, 9, when you're trying to figure out what your will is for your life and what God has called you to do, doesn't it say he has made known the mystery of his will? Well, which one is it? Is it a ministry or is it known? Have you ever been confused? God, what do I need to go? What do I need to do? Are you calling me to this? Are you calling me to that? Come on, man, but you haven't figured out something in your marriage and in your family? Come on, are you with me? The Bible says they are mysteries, but it says when you pray in the Spirit, he speaks in mysteries. So when you are going through a season where it feels mysterious and you're, God, I don't know what to do. You know what you do is you get in a quiet place and you start praying in the spirit. And as you pray in the spirit, God will speak to your mysteries. Come on, come on. Y'all feel, man, this is good preaching. That deserves at least a 98% amen. Come on, y'all. Okay. First Corinthians 14, like I was saying, Paul is saying it's the Corinth church. He's trying to teach him to understand the purpose and how to use the gift of the Holy Spirit. He's saying the difference between the public use and the private grace, you could say, or the private gift that God gives you. He's saying when you walk up to somebody, this is where it's kind of misinterpreted. It's, it, it's misinterpreted saying that it, it, it was only used for that moment in time. It was just used publicly, and if it's not interpreted, then it's wrong. And it's kind of one-sided here. And Paul's trying to say, hey, what people were actually doing is they weren't quite understanding it. People would ask them a question like, hey, how you doing today? And that person would respond, should have bought a hundred butter kia. Should have bought a hundred butter butter kia. Should have bought like, what are you talking about, bro? You can't understand it. Come on, are y'all following me in the house? And Paul's like, no, bro, you got it, you got it mixed up, homie. I'm not saying when somebody asks you a question in English, respond in English, bro. Come on, are y'all with me in the house? I mean, I mean, it, they will not understand. But you pray in the spirit privately. If anything is announced publicly, it must be interpreted publicly. Are you with me now? But there is a private use that is just for you. That's why Paul says, I would rather you say five words that people understand than 10,000 words that people can understand. It doesn't mean only speak English because people don't understand. This has been twisted. Paul said only speak five words of understanding, not 10,000 words of, uh, of, of spirit. In other words, he's not saying do one or the other. He's saying it can be both and. Come on. Let, let me show it to you. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 13. Come on. Does anybody get anything out of this? Come on. Let me know you're with me. Say yeah. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 13, and the New King James Version says this. Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret, right? And verse 14, for if I pray, I'm going to get back to that, but notice, if I pray, it is a choice, not a demand. In a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful, meaning I don't get it, bro. I don't understand it. What is the conclusion then? Here's your answer. I will pray with the spirit. Here's the key words. And I will also. Somebody say that with me. And I will also. That means two things. Am I right? He says, I will pray in the spirit and I will also pray with understanding. And I will sing in the spirit. And I will also sing in understanding. Are, are y'all catching this? In other words, he's saying, he's saying that it's not one or the other. My spirit prays, but my, my flesh isn't going to understand. And, and sometimes when I do my spirit, when I pray with understanding, my spirit's going to understand. Are, are you following me? It's like you can, don't do one or the other. I pray in the spirit and I pray in understanding. I pray in English to you. I'm t- how many thankful that I'm preaching to you in English right now and not in tongues? Some of y'all be like, this church is crazy. And I'm going to go down the street. Come on, y'all, are y'all with me, right? 
Aren't you thankful, right, to understand the moment and the situation? So Paul is saying, it's not, man, I just hope you get this. It's not one or the other, but you need both. If Paul needed both and Jesus needed both, can I tell you, my friends, then I need both also. I need to learn how to pray in the Spirit, and I need to learn how to pray in understanding. Some of us are still struggling to pray in understanding. <laughs> but if you have the Spirit, so much more can be added. Come on, are you all with me? This, it's scriptural, number two, number two. You've got to understand that what I'm talking about today, it's a benefit. It is a benefit to you. If you could have something that could benefit from not hitting up so many mistakes and not screwing up as many times, how many take that benefit? Come on, well, come on. Are you with me? This is a benefit. What does praying in tongues do for you? How does it benefit you? 1 Corinthians 14, 4 says this. A person who speaks in tongues is strengthened personally. Strengthened personally. Are you catching this? But one who speaks a word of prophecy strengthens the entire church. For example, I think it was a couple weeks ago, you heard it just dropped in my spirit. You heard me say, hey, if you're looking for a small church, this might not be a church for you. Because I believe God is going to do great things. Come on, y'all with me, man. We're going to reach this city together. And so prophetically, God will drop things that strengthens the church in my spirit and in others. But God is saying, I personally want to give you this prayer language to benefit you because when you are weak, it can make you strong. It can build you up personally. Now, turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Come on, this is good stuff. Ephesians chapter 6. I don't know if you ever noticed this about, about the power of the Holy Spirit, but here we're talking about God's armor. And how many know the Bible says we are up against not flesh and blood, right, but against what? Spirits and principalities, right? How many know there's a spiritual war going on that we are battling right now? Come on, you see it in our country. You see it in our city. And the Bible says that you need to get ready to fight, bro. You need to get ready. Do you, do you have all the armor of God on? How many want to win the battle? I mean, the, the war is already won, but you still got to fight the battle. The job is to teach you. My job as your pastor, as your friend, is to equip you to make sure you got the right armor on for what you're about to walk out here in tech. When you leave this place and you, and you drive down Jensen Drive and you go back into your workplace and you go back into your marriage and you go back into your family, my job is to make sure you got the right armor to win. I'm trying to give it to you right here. Come on, are you with me? And how, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but this is, this is a truth to God's word about the Holy Spirit. It goes on to say in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, it might be on the screen, you can follow along with me. It says this, I'm reading out the NLT translation. It says, therefore put on every piece, somebody shout every piece, every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Put on every piece. In other words, it ain't one piece. In other words, it ain't just coming to church on Sunday for an hour and a half and you good. I'm going to leave that one alone, okay? But in other words, it ain't just about one thing. There are multiple pieces to the army of God. I mean, to God's armor. Are you all with me? And you've got to ask yourself, we're about to read it. Do you have every piece of armor to keep the enemy from coming in and attacking you? It goes on to say, keep reading. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm, by the way, if you have it all on. How many say that's a pretty good place to be? Because when the devil attacks you, it says when the enemy comes in like a flood, it may be coming against you, but it ain't near as strong as what's in you and what's on you. And he goes on to say, verse 14, stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body of the armor of God, his righteousness. Verse 15, for shoes, put on the peace that comes from good news so that you will be fully prepared. How many know good shoes are J's? Not LeBron's. Can I get an amen? Okay, not Curry's. Or KD's because he deserted us and went to the West Coast. Okay, verse 15. Y'all thought Curry was saved until he threw that mouthpiece. All right, verse 15. Force J's, put on the peace that comes from the good news so they will be fully prepared. Come on, is it all right to have fun in church? Come on, y'all. All right, verse 16. Check this out. In addition to all this, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows from the devil. Put on a salvation of helmet. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. In verse 18, right, it says what? 
pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Pray in the spirit. Put on the helmet. Put on the shoes. Hold up the shield. Pick up the sword. By the way, if the word is a sword, then worship is how we swing it, right? Okay, we'll, we'll come back to that. And so, and so bottom line is, if you got all these armor of God, we miss the very last part of the armor of God. And it's the Holy Spirit. The having the Holy Spirit, being baptized in the Holy Spirit, is a part of the armor of God. And my question to you today is, do you only have two baptisms? And there's something left exposed. All the Bible says is the enemy just needs a foothold. Am I right? It says in James. And he'll come in knocking on the door. My question today is, do you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit to fully put on the armor of God, to stand ground? Because when you were weak, it'll make you strong. Come on, y'all with me now? Come on. I mean, good, good stuff. Because you got to understand, whenever you're attacked, God not only attacks your spirit, but he attacks your flesh. You can't fight spirit with flesh. You can only fight spirit with spirit. Come on, are you with me? When your spirit is hurting, you can't all of a sudden go work out. You might feel better, right? You might feel good, but you still have a broken heart. You can only fight spirit with spirit. This is why I pray, and it says when you pray in tongues and when you pray in the spirit, it will strengthen you personally. Jude verse 20 says, uh, chapter 20 says this, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. People ask me, man, why do you pray? It's simple, because it builds me up. Maybe you walked in here before. If you're walking, maybe some, I don't know if you are like this, but anybody who walked in, no, pastor, you know, I, I just don't need any more building up. I've had all the building up that I need. I think I'm good now. God is great. Marriage is good. It's awesome. I don't need no building up. Come on, is anybody like that? No, every day. Some of y'all been in the worst fight on the way to church this morning than you've ever been in your life. You need Jesus right now. Come on, somebody. Am I right? Come on, your flesh is crying out and you need the Holy Spirit. Come on, are y'all with me in the day? That's why the Bible says in his word that he comes at you in the morning. He comes at you when you're laying down. He comes at you during the day. He comes at you when you're sleeping. So when I am weak, I know what can make me strong. I can pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion and in every circumstance because it builds me up. When I'm having a rough day, I'm in the car and I start praying in the Spirit. I never walk out and take on the day without the joy of the Lord. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion because it will build you up. I asked my wife this morning because, to be honest with you, I never looked at it in 1 Corinthians 14 when it says he speaks in mysteries through the Spirit. I looked at my wife and I said, man, we've never prayed in the Spirit together as a couple. But what if we start doing that? How much more would God speak to us in the mysteries of us trying to figure out our marriage and our family? Come, come, are you with me? What if, what if you're having a hard time in your family? Maybe your business, maybe your calling, your dream. Can I tell you, there's been many times launching this church. There's been many times on the journey of seeing God reach this church and having needs. And re- how many? Can I tell you, it's hard starting church. Is that okay to admit? Can I tell you, man, it ain't easy. How many know life just ain't easy, right? But there have been many times, you don't know, I've been behind that curtain just praying in the spirit. Jesus, give me strength because I don't even know if I can preach today. Come on, that's about as real as I can get. I'm not up here to try to act like I got my act together, man. I'm I'm up here spiritually. Woo! I have cried many times saying, God, I don't even think I could do this. But when I pray in the spirit, it builds me up. Let's me know I can take on the moment. I can conquer the day. And I can do what God's called me to do. Come on, come on. Is this helping anybody? You, you need this. You need this in your life. And the last point is this. The last point is this. Is that you got to know that it's a choice. This is a choice. In other words, you choose whether you want to pray in the spirit or not. Come on, are y'all with me? Remember, we're not pressuring this. Paul said in the scripture, for if I pray. In tongues. Doesn't say the Holy Spirit's gonna put you in a trance and you're gonna jump on the microphone to H E B and be like, ah, 
Come on, are y'all with me? Come on, I'm, I'm trying to make fun of it, but we've seen it misused and abused. This is a great gift from God. It's not, you don't need it to get into heaven. You need salvation to get into heaven. But he's saying, hey, I want, I want to give this to you because it will help you. When you need building up, hey, I can, I, can, I can help you. You know, 99.9% of the time when you think you need a pastor, you really just need to sit down and meet with God. I'm not saying that we're not here for you. That's the call of God on my life, our church, our staff, our leaders. We're here for you. But I want you to know that the same power that is in me is the same power that is in you. Sometimes it may not be a Sunday. Sometimes it's Monday. You feel, I mean, you come to church, whoa, Jesus, you feeling good on Monday? It's Tuesday. It's Wednesday. Hey. Friday, you just ready to give up in the world. Come on, am I right? Is, it, is it anybody else? I mean, Friday, it is like when you need it most. How about you get in the car? Pray in the Spirit. Watch God strengthen you for the day. Come on, are you with me? Now you might be asking the question, man, how do I get this? It's like anything else. It's a leap of faith. It's a leap of faith. Some of you may be like, man, I don't even know what it sounds like, Pastor. That's cool. Sounds like a bunch of gibberish, basically, because you don't understand it. Best way to describe it is it, it's, it, it sounds like your kid, your baby, or a baby, or your child, remember when they first come out? And I mean, and the way they sound, that doesn't make sense. I mean, your baby doesn't come out speaking in perfect diction. It's going to be like, whoa, this world is a plethora of awesomeness. <laughs> I mean, am I right? Come on, y'all. <laughs> I mean, your baby don't come out speaking in perfect diction. Your baby comes out. It's that, it's that my, my, my son right now, he's, we got four kids, seven through one, and my one-year-old sitting at the table, he's like, I just, I just, he goes, something like that. And I'm like, I give him a cup, and he's like, no. And my oldest daughter, Braylon, is like, he wants more bread, Daddy. So Cruz, Cruz speaks in tongues, and Braylon is an interpretation of tongues. I don't know. Come on, come on. Are y'all hearing me today? You, you know what I'm saying? You do this by faith. You do realize you speak in English by faith. You pray in English by faith. You pray and you cry out, God, I need your help. It is an understanding. So if you can pray with faith in English and understand, why not pray in the Spirit and trust His understanding and trust His strength and trust His guidance? Why not both? If it is a gift for you today and it will help you, bro, why not take it? Why not? It's real simple, though. We're going to have a second here. The worship team is going to come. We're going to worship. We're going to give a moment. And I believe the Holy Spirit's going to move. And you literally just got to give me a heavenly language. And it's going to probably sound like you repeating the same thing over and over and over again. As it did for me. There came a time where I asked God to extend my prayer language, and he did. Well, you're going to be like, uh, it doesn't matter. Pay attention. Please hear me. It doesn't matter what you say. It's about what you feel when you say it. You'll know it's the power of God. You just got to be willing to, by faith, to open up your mouth and start letting him speak. And I'm not talking about being loud. It can just be soft in your spirit. It's a private gift. Are you hearing me in the house? Luke 11, verse 11 through 13 says this, and then we're going to stand and we're going to pray. Y'all with me today? It says, verse 11, your fathers, if your children ask for fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. Verse 13, check it out. This is us, guys. So if you sinful people who have all fallen short, come on, anybody in the house? know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? If you want it today, he'll do it. Let's stand together. Let's stand together. Here's what I'm going to ask.
ask, I'm going to ask maybe to even turn the house lights down just a little bit. I just want to create an atmosphere. We, we still got time here before we finish out today. The team is going to worship. Just show of hands. How many, how, many, how many feel good right now? Come on, anybody feel good right now? Okay, come on. How many say I needed this today? Come on, anybody in the house? Come on. Here's what I'm going to believe for. You know, I thought, I thought to myself, you know, maybe get our prayer team and they can pray with you. But then it just hit me. It just hit me this week saying, you know what? This just needs to be something between you and God. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, we're not out to point you out. We're not out to do anything like that. But here's, here's what I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask that you, I mean, literally take this moment as serious as you can. Let's put away all of our thoughts. Can we set aside and forget who's maybe to the right, to the left of us, and let's focus on just you and Daddy God right now? Y'all with me? Because I'm going to pray, and I believe that God, through this worship, if you ask, like the Scripture says, the Holy Spirit will come in your life. And if you, some of, if those of you in here, you are Spirit-filled, I'm going to ask that you just simply pray, not in the loud, but how many know the Holy Spirit is a gentleman? Amen. He's a respecter. I'm going to ask you to just pray in the spirit in agreement that those who seek it and those who want it, it'll happen to you. Y'all with me, amen? If you do want it today, here's a few things I'm going to ask you to do. Number one is prepare your heart. When you prepare your heart, you might just need to worship just for a moment. And when you're ready, ask Jesus to baptize you in the spirit. In that moment, so you're going to be your faith leap. When you feel it, it may be a tingling feeling. You may feel warm. You just may feel God's present. You may, you may feel, I, I, I'm just, I don't know about you, but for me, when I feel God, it's, remember how the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is like the wind. You can't see him, but you feel him. When I know the Holy Spirit is on me, it just crosses my hands. I just feel a breeze. Maybe that'll happen to you. In that moment, receive the Holy Spirit. Release your prayer language and step out in boldness. And I'm telling you, God change your life. Amen, church? Every head bowed and every eye closed. Thanks again for joining us today. If you've been impacted by any way by today's sermon, this ministry, we would love to hear about it. Email us your story at mystory@elevatepeople.tv. If you would like to help support this ministry, please go online to elevatepeople.tv, hit the donate tab, the giving tab, and help us continue what God is doing here at Elevate. We love you so much. Thanks again for joining and have a great day.